This is the Daily Medical News by MD Edge, where we bring you the top stories in clinical medicine, followed by a deeper dive into the day's top story. Today is Monday, October 28th. I'm the voice of MD Edge podcast, Nick Andrews. Remember, if you want to learn more about any of the stories you hear in the Daily News, you can find links to each of the sources in the podcast notes. Before we start today, we'd like to ask for your help in making this podcast better. Please take a moment to complete our short listener survey by following the link in the show notes. We would greatly appreciate your feedback, and of course, we appreciate you joining us for the top stories in clinical medicine. Coming up later, the National Academy of Medicine has released a report with recommendations on fighting clinician burnout. But we begin today with the report from the House Energy and Commerce Health Subcommittee regarding the Affordable Care Act. The Trump administration apparently plans to ensure Americans have access to health insurance in the event that the ACA is struck down, but officials involved refuse to share any details of that plan. CMS Administrator Seema Verma said that the president has made it clear that there will be a plan in action to make sure that Americans have access to care. Ms. Verma spoke and answered questions at a House Ways and Means Health Subcommittee hearing last week. She did say that CMS does not have a plan in hand at this moment and dodged questions regarding those details. The committee followed partisan lines. Republicans asked questions that allowed Ms. Verma to highlight some actions that CMS has taken under her leadership, while Democrats pressed for details of the alleged plan. You can read more about this, including quotes from some of the legislators, by clicking the link in the show notes. And now for an update on the Evali crisis in the U.S. Evali, of course, the name of the e-cigarette or vaping-related lung injury. According to new data from the CDC, the number of cases has passed 1,600, and the number of deaths from injury is now at 34. Evali has now occurred in every U.S. state except Alaska, as well as in Washington, D.C., and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Deaths have occurred in 24 states. The median age of patients who died from Evali was 49 years old with a range between 17 and 75. The CDC is now doing additional testing on available samples for chemicals in the bronchioalveolar lavage fluid, blood, or urine, as well as lung biopsy or autopsy specimens. The CDC is also validating methods for aerosol emission testing of case-associated product samples from vaping products and from e-liquids. Patients with COPD who received opioids or benzodiazepines had a greater risk of hospitalization for respiratory-related adverse events. This is according to new research published in the Annals of the American Thoracic Society. In addition, the risk of hospitalization because of respiratory events for patients with COPD was greater when opioid and benzo medications were combined compared with patients who did not take either medication. Researchers performed a case control study of more than 3,200 cases of COPD. Patients were included if they experienced a hospitalization related to a COPD event and compared those patients to a cohort of matched controls. The researchers report that in the 30 days before COPD-related hospitalization, the use of opioids was associated with greater likelihood of hospitalization. That was also true for the use of benzodiazepines. And when patients used both opioids and benzos, those patients had a significantly higher risk of hospitalization compared to patients who did not use either. The Daily Medical News will be right back after this. Welcome back to the Daily Medical News. I am Nick Andrews. The novel drug bremelanotide shows promise in acquired female hypoactive sexual disorder. This is according to the results of two randomized controlled trials as well as a 52-week open-label extension study that was published in Obstetrics and Gynecology. Bremelanotide is an analog of the endogenous neuropeptide alpha-melanocyte-stimulated hormone. It received FDA approval for this indication earlier this summer. The two separate identically designed trials combined more than 1,200 premenopausal women in monogamous relationships with acquired hypoactive sexual desire disorder, they were randomly assigned to receive either bremelanotide or placebo. The women who received the trial drug experienced significant improvements in female sexual function index desire domain scores. The most common adverse events were nausea, flushing, and headache. (music) 
And finally today, a report from an influential federal panel says that the practice of medicine needs a major reset to address the stresses that lead to clinician burnout. Burnout is now a condition that is estimated to affect between one-third and one-half of clinicians in the United States. Last week, the National Academy of Medicine released a report titled Taking Action Against Clinician Burnout, a Systems Approach to Professional Well-Being. Pascal Carrion is a Ph.D. and Professor of Industrial Systems Engineering at the University of Wisconsin Granger School of Engineering. She is also the co-chair of the National Academy of Medicine Committee that produced this report. Dr. Carrion says that this is not an easy process and that there is no simple solution. The NAM report assigns specific tasks to different participants in healthcare through an approach that has six goals. The first goal, create a positive workplace. The second goal, address burnout in training and in the early years of being in attending. The third goal, reduce administrative burden. The fourth goal, improve usability and relevance of health information technology. The fifth goal, reduce stigma and improve burnout recovery services. And the sixth goal, create a national research agenda on clinician well-being. Dr. Christine Castle is co-chair of the NAM committee that produced this report. Dr. Castle said that by casting a wide net and by assigning specific tasks, the NAM report aims to establish efforts to address burnout as a broad and shared responsibility. Dr. Castle noted that it would be too easy for different medical organizations to depict addressing burnout as being outside of their responsibilities. Previously published research has found that between 35% and 45% of nurses and physicians in the U.S. have substantial symptoms of burnout. The range of burnout among medical students and residents ranges between 45% and 60%. The report pointed out that many clinicians describe EHRs as taking a toll on their work and their private lives. Previously reported research has found that for every hour spent with a patient, physicians spend an additional one to two hours on the EHR at work with additional time needed to complete the data entry at work, at home, after work hours. And that concludes this edition of the Daily Medical News. For MD Edge, I'm Nick Andrews. Don't forget, you can find links to the stories in the podcast notes. And please, if you have a moment, take our listener survey.